Welcome to Build Box 3. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the light sun. Let's go ahead and start by double clicking on our 3D world and let's select our light sun over here on our outliner. Right here, centered in our scene editor, is the light sun. Now, the light sun is essentially the light source for your entire game. I'll go ahead and I'll switch to another scene so that you can see the effects of the light sun on objects in your scene. Let me go ahead and select it here in my scene and we'll manipulate it and take a look at some of the features and settings in the light sun so you can get the most out of this feature for your games. Now you'll see up here in the upper right hand corner that you can rename the light sun if you'd like to rename the light source of your game and you can also change the position rotation and scale now I will say that changing the scale and the position doesn't have much of an effect when you're working with your scenes you'll see here that I'll go ahead and I'll change the position and you'll see that the shadows are not moving anywhere on our scene that is because what really, really matters when you're using the light source is the light direction, and that is the rotation. You'll also notice that if you try to scale the object or scale the sun, it does not affect the shadows in any way. So let's go ahead and change the rotation. Now take a look down here in our scene and watch the rotation and the movement of our shadows when you start shifting it around. You can see that I can pull them out and in and change the direction and a lot of the coloring changes on the objects in our scene as well. So working with the rotation and getting the rotation set for the light sun is very essential and very important when you're working with your game. You wanna get that completely dialed in the way you want. Working with the light sun is one of the most important factors that determines the look and feel of your game. For instance, let's go ahead and change the setting on the light color. You simply select the color over here on the right, and then the colors menu will open up over here. And so we can go ahead and select any color that we want, and we can go ahead and change it, and you can see that it's updating it real time in the scene editor. And you can see that it creates a very different and unique feel for the game depending on which color you choose. Uh, going with something like this, a pink gives the platform a much more purple look and changes all the objects and obstacles as well. We can press OK here, and we can also change the intensity of the light. Let's say we overexposed the light and we went with something like 100. You can see that the coloring is really bright now, almost neon. We can also change it to something like 10. And you can see that it lightens it up, but it's actually still quite bright. And then we can go ahead and change it to something like 2. And you can see that it is slightly intensified and we we'll change it back to one and it's down. So you can change the settings very gradually if you wanted to do something like 1.5 and do a very gradual change to the light intensity, you can do that as well. And then we also have the option of adding the ambient color. You can go ahead and select the color over here on the right. You can change the color options over here on the left and then that'll give you another look and change your, the feel of your game as well. And so you want to combine the look of the ambient color and the light color when you're deciding the look and feel of your game. Now the last functionality of the light sun that I would like to show you has to deal with shadow distance and shadow intensity. I thought I would go ahead and do this line of cubes here to give you a good example of shadow distance and shadow intensity. So first off, let's go ahead and adapt the shadow distance. So if I do a distance of 2500, you should be able to see the shadows of almost all of the cubes or probably all of them when we looked at the preview window. So let's go ahead and preview that and you can see clearly all of the shadows going all the way down into the distance, which is great. Okay, perfect. So now let me go ahead and exit out of the preview. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the shadow distance to a thousand. Great. So now the shadows are not going to show the entire distance. Let's go ahead and take a look at the preview. You can see here that about halfway through, the shadow distance is cut off and it starts to fade out and it's really, really nice and it has a natural look. So if you wanted to do that and have some of the shadows in your distant objects not be shown as vividly, then you can do that. Or if you wanna have a nice fade in, you can do that as well. So that's shadow distance. That determines how far away the shadows are shown from the sun. Now shadow intensity has to do with how dark those shadows are on the ground. So if I do something like 0.1, you can see that the shadows are pretty much gone. You can see a really, really light shadow on the ground. If you did something like 0.4, it would show up quite a bit more. And you can go all the way up to one where it's a very, very dark shadow. And you can see that here. And it shows up nice and crisp and clean and dark 
in the preview. And we still have the shadow distance rendering only up to here. So you can see the difference between a really, really dark shadow and a light faded shadow happening over here in the distance. Okay, thank you so much for watching this tutorial video. Look out for more tutorials at buildbox.com.